A-Y. They're the attorneys for Ms. Parker, and they'll be making a brief statement, and we'll take some questions at the end. Thank you. Good afternoon. As Andrea stated, I'm attorney Kevin Murray. Yesterday, we filed a civil lawsuit against Chet Hay, alleging uh, assault and battery and intentional infliction of emotional distress. At the same time, we're researching other causes of action against Mr. Chet Hanks. Our lawsuit alleges that Chet Hanks demonstrated an ever, excuse me, an ever escalating pattern of domestic abuse against our client, Kiana Parker. With all that being said, my co-counsel, D'Angelo Lowe, will give you an update regarding the protective order and the criminal investigation. Thank you and good afternoon. An application for a protective order was filed in this case and a temporary protective order was signed in January of this year. The court found that Chet Hanks was a clear and present danger to our client, Kiana Parker. The court found that family violence was likely to be committed again by Chet Hanks against Kiana Parker. We've tried to reach Chet Hanks and the Hanks family multiple times in January and February, and they never responded, despite us knowing that they know. We spoke with the lawyer for the family, Marty Singer, in February, and instead of appearing and answering, Chet Hanks decided to file a lawsuit in March in California, as opposed to here in this county of Fort Bend, Texas, where the acts occurred. And instead of addressing these issues, the Hanks family lawyer has still not presented Chet, Chet Hanks to appear and answer for his violent acts committed towards our client, Kiana Parker. Further, we met with the Sugarland Police Department in January and was told that a potential uh, criminal case would have been submitted to the Fort Bend County DA's office in January, but it was not submitted until March. Although I do believe the Fort Bend County DA's office is taking this seriously, I've handled multiple criminal cases in this county, and I'm just about certain if this was a black man that committed these same violent acts towards a white woman or a black woman for that matter, charges would have been charged by now. And the client, I'm sorry, Chet Hanks would have been charged by now. I've had clients charged with much less in this county. And we expect that Chet Hanks would be treated just like any of those clients. Instead, he has not been charged and has made a mockery of black women and the criminal justice system by proclaiming that it's going to be a white boy summer and a black queen summer while knowing he mentally and physically abused the black queen. And we want justice for Kiana Parker. Thank you, thank you, D'Angelo. Once again, I wanna reiterate, this is about domestic violence. This is about violence within the confines of a relationship between a man and a woman. A man who mentally and physically and psychologically battered Kiana Parker. It's our understanding that the mental, physical and psychological abuse started at the end of 2020. We were contacted in January 2021. As stated by my co-counsel, after the protective order was filed, we reached out, we attempted to reach out to Chet Hanks, and then we reached out to Rita Wilson. And that was in order to let them know, first, the case was filed, so we need to appear, and second, so he did not violate the order because he is a gun owner and the order prohibits him from having his, his, his firearm. After no response from Rita Wilson, as my co-counsel said, we got a call from their lawyer. He said he was the Hanks family lawyer. We took that to believe that therefore 
He represented the interests of Chet Hanks, Rita Wilson, and Tom Hanks. And he let us know he was in constant contact with the Hanks family. He consistently said it was the Hanks family that he was talking to. And we also reached out to the Hanks family because we were concerned about Chet Hanks uh, escalating erratic behavior and the fear that our client had based on his actions in the past, his threats of violence against her, his actual uh, committing violence against her. Now, this is what I really want to iterate. We did this confidentially. We did not do it. We did not call the media. We did not request the media to have to, to give them knowledge of this. But it was the other side that released the video. It was the other side that Chet starts talking about using social media. So talking about the white boy summer, black queen. They're the ones that has have been putting this in the public eye. And we just want to be very, very clear. After that video was released, was released, our client received threats of bodily injury. She received death threats. She has two twin nine-year-old daughters. They were their lives were threatened. Today we have extra security because these threats she believes are real. And this is all because of the release of the video and putting this in the public domain. Now, I want to further talk to you about the relationship that they had. Chet Hanks and our client had a two year relationship. Approximately the last year, they lived together. Our client believed that it was a real relationship. She had no expectation that it would end anytime soon, let alone at the hand of physical abuse by Chad Hanks. Now I'm gonna get into what exactly Chad Hanks did. Chet Hanks repeatedly called our client a black bitch and other names. He repeatedly told our client he was going to blow her brains out. He repeatedly reminded our client, and I quote, he, he was Chet Hanks. She wasn't shit and no one would believe her because she was just a ghetto black bitch. That goes to the mindset of this man. That goes to this man illustrating his privilege. That goes to a white man disrespecting this black woman and then knowing he did it, created this false, it's gonna be a white boy summer celebrating with black queens. They're making this about celebrity and race. We're making this about domestic violence. And we're serious about that. Now there's several other instances I won't go into today. But even after all that, after all that disrespect, after all the things that Chet Hanks did, our client was still not sure she should come forward. She was still worried about the safety of herself. And she says, I'm unsure. Now, finally, this affidavit alleging all these things has been on file since January. We've contacted their lawyer. We gave him the cause number. We told him what county was filed in. Therefore, the Chet Hanks, they have these allegations. 
excuse me, the, the, the Hanks family have these allegations. They understand what we're alleging. All of them. And the fact that they've read this affidavit, know what's in it, the most baffling thing about it is they know, Chet Hanks knows there are relevant facts to this case that our client still didn't want to put in the affidavit. There are relevant facts to this case and our client says, let's keep their private family issues private. Still, is there more? Yes, there's more. Once again, they want to make this about celebrity and race. We want to make this about domestic violence. And I'm going to say it again, domestic violence. Finally, Chet is repeatedly making racialized social media posts to show you exactly what his mindset is. We're here to get justice for Kiana Parker. But are there any questions? What is um, your response? I'm pulling up a statement here from Mr. Singer, so pardon me, I just said it. Take your time. That gentleman accompanied Miss Parker carrying a gun and that she viciously attacked him with a knife. What is your response to his claims in refuting what you're saying? Just so we have I'm gonna be very I'll be very short and direct. That's not true. Okay? And that tells you, look at the video. Does he look like a man that's in fear of his life? That someone brandished a gun? In the video, I, I don't know. I don't know who he's speaking of. But in the background of that video, there's other people walking around that you can see. And they don't look intimidating at all. They do look like they're movers. And he doesn't look to, he doesn't appear to me to be afraid of anything. So you all are speaking publicly today, I mean, in terms of legal action with the documents that are already on file, that have been on file since January, the affidavit, what, what is the next step legally for your client? Well, it's what happened yesterday. We filed the civil lawsuit. Now, to be completely candid, is for them to appear. It's for them to present Chet Hanks for service. Everything now? Are you confident? Do you feel that that's going to happen? That he's going to show up in a civil courtroom when this case goes to trial? We don't believe that would happen. We hope that it happens. But as you see, Chet has continued to try to hide from us. And instead of addressing the issues here in Fort Bend County, he decided to file a cause of action in California, knowing that everything occurred here in Fort Bend County. And, and to answer your question, I expect him to show up because here's the thing. He claims he has a defense. Why wouldn't he show up? Why wouldn't he show up if he has a defense? I think the only reason he wouldn't show up is because he has something to hide. And with taking, let's say as lawyers, we disagree on the facts sometimes. We disagree on, on the law sometimes. But we don't disagree on the fact that if you have something to say, show up and proclaim it in public. That's why our courts are public. That's what our court's for. It's not to hide. It's not a court system. It's not set up for you to uh, evade service. There's and also there's there's way to, to overcome his evasion of service. But our courts are set up publicly. So if you're innocent, if he as he says he is. Let's see. Did Miss Parker care to make any statements today? Miss Parker will not make any statements today. That's it. That's total. Any more questions? Okay. I think all of you are on the email distribution list and we'll be following up with next steps uh, as we get more information and plan uh, subsequent precedents.
Thank you guys so much. All right, thank, thank you. you.